Hey, Lizards, Gizmo here. I wanted to share some of the cigars we'll be smoking in April and May, so you could smoke along with us if you'd like. For Cubans, we got Cohiba Siglo II, El Rey del Mundo Schwa Supreme, and Trinidad Colonialis coming up. And for New Worlds, we've got Padron 2000 Maduro, My Father the Judge, and Davidoff Late Hour in Churchill, with much, much more to come. Have a suggestion? Email us, loungelizardspod at gmail.com. That's loungelizards, P-O-D, at gmail.com. And now, let's get into the episode. Welcome to the Lounge Lizards Podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo, and tonight I'm joined by Rooster, Puba, Senator Pagoda, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some bourbon, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 25th official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a New World cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We discuss Woodford's impact on the greater bourbon industry, things to look for in cigars on any budget, and Senator gives Bam a gift he'll always remember, all among a variety of other things for the next hour. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey with Padron 2000 in Maduro. A thousand series from Padron tonight on the pod, boys. The Padron 2000 Maduro, which is our third Padron we've done. Uh, we did the Exclusivo. We did the number one cigar of the year, the Torpedo in Natural from the 1964 series, both of those. And this one is from the original Padron line. And I would argue, I don't want to say budget line, but that's certainly how it fares in their in their offering. It's fair to call it that. Uh, and, and it's seven bucks a stick. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful, dark Maduro wrapper. Construction is a little bit more rustic, I would say, a little bit yeah, more imperfect is. than yeah. the other Padrones that we normally smoke. And uh, this is an interesting one because it came at the recommendation of a listener uh, cool. via Senator. And Senator had one or two of these and said, we got to do them. Yeah. I mean, I, I so the funny thing is, as uh, one of the biggest fans of Padron, certainly in the room, um, and there are many of them. I had never had a Padron 1000 series cigar. I'd only had a larger ring gauge that I didn't enjoy. And uh, someone told me to try the 2000 series. So I had ordered a single, uh, two of them to try. And I smoked both. And I said, wow, that was shockingly good for a $7 stick. And so I bought a box and here we are. So I personally have had a bunch of the other 1000 series in Maduro but they were much bigger than this, and I found them to be harsh and, and really yep. not as enjoyable as some of the 1964 series. But with Senator's uh, endorsement, we are going to do it tonight on the pod, boys. Nice, yeah, on, uh, honestly, I've always looked down on this entire line. I've never had a, any of the 1,000 series cigars. So snob. I'm, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Coming from Brewster, you just got called a snob. You elitist <laughs> bastard. <laughs> I will tell you, the wrapper smells really good. It does. It, it does. Smells, smell, smell the foot. Yeah, I did that. It's, it's it very smells, nice. It smells oh, wow. wonderful. The Classic Padron. Smells. It's, it's uh, man, so far surprising on, on this. All right, boys, let's cut this thing. Yeah. See, we're getting on the cold draw. <laughs> Pooba and his phone never fails. That's a great Conan O'Brien skit, man. <laughs> Miss that guy. He has a great podcast, though. The draw is nice and open. And great cedar. Draw. A lot of cedar. cedar. I get a lot of cocoa. Wow, I'm cedar. getting a lot of cocoa and sweetness. and Oh, yeah. Just classic Padron. Mm. And that's what was shocking to me about what, what Senator said, being an Exclusivo guy, that uh, this cigar for him was uh, really, really enjoyable. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. So let's light this thing, boys. The Padron 2000 series. In Maduro, it's five, uh, five inches by 50 ring gauge. And it's only $7.20 a stick. So what I've seen on a lot of forums is guys chase these. They all come in cellophane. Uh, every cigar in the 1000 series comes in cellophane. And guys chase these with, with yellow cello because they, uh, you know, these aren't as aged as the 1964 and other lines, uh, so they think that with age, these get closer to what you get in a 1964 line. So I guess we'll see how this thing does tonight here on the pod. Yeah, it has those. 
it, it, it has those uh, similar notes to when you light an exclusivo, right? Just not so. quite as... It's not as robust. Yeah, like a milder version of that. Yeah, yeah, a bit. A step down, maybe. It's like a cousin. Yeah. It's really nice on the light. Oh, for me, classic it's a co- Padron. For me, it's a cocoa bomb on yeah. the light. Yeah. Great smoke output. Great draw. Really, really nice. So, oh, I- Senator, do these come in box of... Hang 20 on. or 25? Bam's Uh-oh. got something. I like this cigar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really surprising. Yeah. That was my exact reaction the first time I lit this. I mean, I'm sitting there saying. Yeah, I'm kind of in disbelief for a $7 cigar. For seven right bucks? off the bat, it's got a lot of flavor. Yeah. And the, you know what it is? To me, it's maybe this is going to sound crazy, but it's actually a little creamy. Agree. Yeah. So I just answered my own question, by the way. If you get a box of these 26 in the box, and you can get them for somewhere between 185 and 200 bucks for 26. So that's a mm. pretty good value cigar, Absolutely. especially from Padron. So I'm 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 curious how this is going to perform tonight. But wow! On the light, very nice. No floral notes for you. No. <laughs> I mean, it's starting out like a little bit milder than the Exclusivo is. It is, right? yeah. But you can. But it has the same uh, DNA. Like, like Puba said, yeah. it's a distant cousin, a little baby brother of that. Of that I'll cigar. also say, give it time. Yeah. It picks up. Really. Can imagine. Mm. It has. There's something about on on the light here that it, it there's a little there's a touch of harshness or something. That's that's kind of biting me a little bit. Um, not, I can't put my finger on I'm it. Not getting any of that. It's yet. not as refined as you know, obviously what I'm used to from Padron. But what's funky about it? I, I'm the exact opposite of that because I'm getting the creaminess and a little bit of the DNA, which I love that term. Yeah, but yeah, it's a great, great description. I don't get that bite here. I'm not getting a bite either. Rooster, yeah. are you getting a bite? No. Puba? No. So as Rooster once said, Pagoda? my palate's fucked. Me neither. <laughs> Pr- primitive palette. No, primitive it's palette. just it's just lighter bodied. Yeah, really. For me, mm. um, I mean, look at the burn on this. Oh, it's razor sharp. Oh, right? yeah. The construction's really great. Like Padron, Padron. You, you know, when you when you clip it, the draw is like wide open. It's typical kind of. But not the most beautiful looking cigar. It's not. It's agree. Uh, it's it's very imperfect. Having having an entire box of these, it, it you know uh, how they achieve that price point. There's no doubt the the quality control is not like the sixty four line. Very rustic in construction. Great smoke output though. Oh, oh yeah, the combustion it is does. ridiculous. The, fin- the finish is distinctly like not as. It's not as long and it's not as smooth. You get a little bit of that. It's not like a sixty four. It's just but not as refined. It's not as refined, but it's, it's really good. Agree. Yeah. I mean, for, listen, I, for seven dollars a stick. I mean, how many other cigars can you buy for seven dollars that, just on the light, give you this kind of performance? So, I mean, yeah. So I very think the challenge with this cigar is that, and I've smoked these. I've smoked a decent amount of these. The, uh, <clears throat> when I first started smoking Padron, and you know, it's like an entry level. It's you don't realize like the value in the uh, like the it just doesn't have that smooth like velvety creamy finish that that a sixty four is going to give you, but it's giving you enough. It, 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 it's there, so I let's we'll see how it develops. I would agree with that. I mean, my my <clears throat> even take this far and having had this before. You know, it's a less refined 64. But my big fear was that this would be nothing like the 64 and this would be a disaster. And it, it, it's, I think, so far by the reactions and, and having smoked it, it's not. You know what I like? It's interesting. The, the band is very classic Cuban Monte Cristo in style. It's true. It looks like a, like almost like an imitation of the classic Monte Cristo line, uh, band uh, from the Cuban Monte Cristos. It's very difficult to go backwards. Yeah. That's the problem. Because once you once you once once you've tasted the 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 coup de gras, and then you go backwards, you know you have this as like an, as kind of an introductory cigar, and you're like, uh, and then you and then you go to the night, and then you go to the X sixty four in Maduro, and then you, go, you, you to go backwards to this is a little bit more difficult. But you make a good point though that the idea of an intro cigar. You know, when you have guests that don't smoke cigars or haven't had very many of these, and I know, Senator, you give out exclusivos like they're a dollar each. But 
this is a great party cigar. Yeah. That's, it's a well-respected brand, you know, one of the best in the world, but it's also it's a very high-quality stick to give out to guests. I'm glad you said that yeah. because when I smoke this cigar, so I, I'm the person who said, you know, I know guys talk about I have a guest humidor, all that. I can't look at cigars. I don't want to smoke, so I don't have a guest humidor. And, and as a result, I have no choice. I do. I hand out exclusivos, you know, to anyone and everyone when they're over and they want a cigar. And yeah, sure, when they, they love them and then I look at the box and I say, well, holy shit, there, I just went through a box in, you know, what feels like a few hours. Um, and, and some I'm sure really appreciate it. And others probably couldn't appreciate it that much because they don't smoke enough cigars to really appreciate what's so amazing about the, the 64 line. Um, but having this, I said to myself, this may be the first what I'd call a yard cigar, like a very affordable stick that you would light up at any time for any reason the first yard cigar that I would give to guests and I would smoke one with them right. and not have a complaint of, right. Oh man, you, how you, am I going to get through this? You would cigar? actually enjoy it. Yeah. 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 And it's, if you have this in your humidor, it's a respectable cigar. To have I'll, I'll be honest. It, for me, where I would kind of place this in my mind is if I'm in a time crunch or if I'm out somewhere and I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have, or you're in a humidor that you have to, you, you know, you have a half hour, an hour, you want to pick up a stick. You, you, you're not quite sure. This is, I would, Absolutely reach for this. Yeah. Totally. And I, having had the 3,000 and the 4,000, I would have never said that. Same. Yeah, and a good thing about this, it has enough body where it'll, it'll hold up to a, a good sc glass of scotch. Yep. You know, and, and, and what we're drinking tonight, yeah, it'll yeah. hold up to that. So this, uh, so this line of cigars, the 1,000 series from Padron, we, we waxed quite a bit on episode three about Padron uh, uh, and their history. But this cigar was... The only cigar, this line, the Thousand line, they call it the Padron series. Uh, it, it, this was the only line they had for 30 years. From, you know, when they oh, were wow. founded to 1964 to 1994, hmm. the Thousand series were the only cigars, the Padron. So they built their business on these cigars. I had no idea. I yeah. actually didn't know that either. Yeah, that no was idea. it. And in 1994, like we talked about, and again, for the listener, if you haven't heard it, go back to episode three, we wax on the history and Jorge Padron coming in after Ho Jose Padron, his father. Uh, but uh, they didn't introduce the 64 line, which really was their first foray into age cigars, you know, putting out tobacco that had four or five years of age. This was what they had for 30 years. I used to smoke a lot of these. Um, and uh, they're good. I mean, they, they you know, I'm, is it a familiar friend? <laughs> um, it's coming back to me. It's hard to go backwards yeah. um, mm -hmm. with it, but it's... On the right occasion, though, it fits in nicely. You yeah. know, if you're in a golf cart or something and you, you really just don't, you know, and you're driving along the fairway or and you don't want to light up like a thin-skinned Cuban um, and, you, and you want something to stay lit and you really don't give a fuck if you smoke half of it and have to ditch it or... Even, you know, I think Gizmo's getting at that. He was saying, like, oh, if you're kind of in a pinch, like, you think about it. When we buy short smokes for, you know, when we're really in a pinch, it's the end of the night. We just want one more smoke, but we don't have much time. Um, you know, we're usually spending five, seven, five, six, seven, eight dollars on that little short smoke and up in half Corona, super affordable. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this price point, even if <laughs> even if I only smoke half of this yeah. and it delivers a lot of flavor, you're good. I'm not going to feel bad about leaving it in my ashtray where. You know, an exclusive or something else. Yeah, I'm going to feel bad about dumping a fifteen, sixteen dollars stick. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. To sure. me, if I often uh, travel with the uh, with the family, and what will end up happening is uh, my wife and the kids will want to go shopping and stuff. And there's a there's a little shop where we go, and they have a nice selection of padrones and stuff. But I never know how much time I'm going to have. This is what I'm going to start picking up because I bought like a, a 1926 at one point which is a pretty high price cigar and my dumb ass. I didn't realize how little time I was going to have. You know how it is with kids and family. And I had to ditch half of it. <laughs> and it was, it like really bummed me out oh, that yeah. I had to walk out of there with half of that cigar yeah. in the ashtray. So this is, this is really enjoyable for the price. And I really can see it fitting in those moments for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the finish is just short. It is. I was about to say that and you're absolutely right. It's like right. abrupt. Yeah. It's, like, it's like it comes off the palate when you blow it out your mouth and then it's like, it's just gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like that's a, accurate. It's like a muted, muted. exclusivo. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly. But exactly. Right? Specifically, for well on, said. On the notes for the exclusivo, I do get on that cigar. I get 
cocoa and a lot of espresso, a little bit of cedar, deep coffee. Senator, you hit it on the nail for me. For me, I'm, I am getting a light chocolate and cocoa on this. And I, it's very nice. I don't get much more than that as far as flavor profiles are concerned. Yeah, I, I would say the big difference in flavor profile between this and the 64, this is a cocoa bomb. And the 64 certainly has cocoa, but the, certain, uh, the 64 also is very earthy. And that you don't get in this. And it would be fascinating to see. I mean, Gizmo mentioned that there are people who buy these and age them. You know, I'm sure if you sat, if I just leave this in my humidor for three, four years, I'm sure it will probably develop pretty close to what a 64, you know, tastes like in flavor profile. So, yeah, be interesting. I think the tobaccos that are used in this are not aged that long. So right. that, that's where you don't get that complexity that you get in and some of the aged padrones. Right. Yes. And I also believe, I, I, I would have to say it's close, but the primings that are used in this are not going to be the same. It's it's a combination of factors. I just don't think it's just the age. I don't think the blend is the same, and this is just mm -hmm. younger. Yeah, and this is, you know. It's, but it's close. It's damn close. But what's interesting It for, has Padron flavors, which does, is what surprised it's damn me. Close. It does, yeah. and for the price, it there is zero harshness to this cigar. None. And what I was saying about, I was getting a little bit of a bite that it, certainly I'm about, what, Three quarters of an inch in now, half an inch must it, have evaporated. It's, by they're now. gone now. Yeah. It's and it's it's down to what we're talking about. It is an abrupt finish. It is very very nice and smooth, but it doesn't. It's not quite giving you what you get when you purchase something mm -hmm. in the sixty four line. And combustion great. is great. It's it's great, and, the, and look at the burn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Razor, razor sharp, burn. Sharp. razor sharp, white ash, stacking dimes over here, dude. Yeah. Very nice. Burning quickly, though, right? Like, I think I had like five or six puffs. Well, for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything, Everything burns mentioned. quickly for you. Everything for Pagoda. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, no, you're I'm, right, I'm just though. surprised right. it just went around three quarters of an inch very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a 15 minute cigar for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same as your exclusivo time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. no, no. <laughs> you know what else is interesting, too, about this that I think we should note is unlike the other lines that Padron puts out, it doesn't have that second band mm. with the serial number on it. Yeah. So, you know, other Padrones have a, a little bit more of an ornate uh, logo and band on it and whatnot. Like we said, this is closer to the, to the Monte Cristo band, but it doesn't have the, the, the secondary band yeah. underneath it. And that's, it. That's, that's pretty special. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And again, for seven bucks, I can't complain. I mean, that serial number also is really to prevent against counterfeiting. Absolutely. And I think they have to calculate that at this price point. What moron is trying to, you know, make fakes of these? I'm very impressed with this little cigar. Great. Just the first budget cigar that I have found that I said, like, I actually wouldn't mind smoking. Certainly not going to pursue it like I do other, you know, higher end cigars, but I, I wouldn't have a problem smoking this. Yeah, it kind of makes you want to hunt down those... Uh Yellow cellophane. Yellow cellophane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Wonder what just, they're like. Just I'm curious, like, yeah. what it does to this stick. Right. Yeah. And the bourbon goes well. So does yeah, let's talk, about the, uh, let's talk about the bourbon mm -hmm. pairing tonight. So <laughs> we kind of, uh, we wanted to match up uh, kind of the mentality here of, of going in a little bit more of a value direction than some of the other Padron offerings and pairing that with a more accessible bourbon tonight. And we went with uh, Woodford Reserve. It's enjoyable. Thanks to Pagoda, of course. Thank you, Pagoda. Thank you. So let's try this, the Woodford Reserve. Well, I love it. Yeah. Puba's never drank this. <laughs> <laughs> First time. Wait a minute. Don't you have a faucet in your shower that's dedicated to... Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think it's... I love Woodford Reserve. I like I like Woodford Reserve. I like Bullet. I like, uh, I like both. I mean, to me, I'm a bourbon guy, so Woodford... Uh, it's super versatile, um, very drinkable. Um, I've got a question for you. Between and, the, and the price point's great. Between the Bullet and the and the Woodford, is this smoother? Um, they're both good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like the Woodford better. Yeah. I I agree with. Yeah, Bieber. I do yeah. too. Yeah. I'll also say funny story. So Grinder is not here to to tell this, but um, when it was Grinder's birthday. Um, he did a, a little bourbon tasting, and um, I had provided a, a bottle that was actually Michter's, which we reviewed, which Grinder really, really liked. But ironically, in a blind taste test, I think we did maybe seven or eight different bourbons of all different price points. I kid you not, Woodford Reserve was number one. 
It was probably the most affordable bottle of any that was part of the tasting. I was shocked. Wow. Yeah. I had it in my top three. Michter's was in my top three, and, and Woodford also uh, made it there. I don't know why it's shocking. It's a it's a well regarded. Oh, just the price to yeah. to like have something that's like that enjoyable at that price point. Similar to what we say about Padron relative to Davidoff or some other brands, it's it's kind of shocking that it's they're solid. able to do that so well at that yeah, price. Yeah, they really are. It's it's I love it. I I, I drink I drink it on the rocks. And uh, how much is that bottle of uh, Woodford? Thirty eight uh, bucks, I think. Oh wow, a little under forty. Wow, great. Yeah, I great mean, value. a big bottle of it's only sixty bucks or something. You know, it's so. cool. I'm reading a couple. You know, I was reading a couple things about uh, Woodford that I thought were interesting. Number one, I didn't realize that on average, the bourbon in these bottles is aged seven years. Oh, cool. So I would oh, wow. have expected it to be younger than that for that price, which is cool. Very high quality product. It, yeah, and it's uh, it's also credited, these guys are credited, this specific brand, Woodford Reserve, is, is credited with helping reshape whiskey's image over the last few decades, especially for sure. with stuff coming out of uh, the Americas. For sure. So Woodford was really at the at the... I mean, it was almost like when it came to bourbon coming up, because there was a bourbon boom. I mean, people when started. When was that? It, I want to say it started to happen in like the early 2000s where Woodford, uh, where bourbon started to become more in vogue. I mean, people drank, you know, Jack. Yeah. They drank Wild Turkey. You know, when you thought of bourbon, makers, makers, maker. By the way, makers, Doers. makers is still great. Makers, you know, I I'll agree. No one makers can shit on makers. No. I, I do enjoy. Uh, I, I, I agree. I'll, I drank makers mark for years, and 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 uh, I should revisit makers mark. I should buy more of that. I mean, uh, and then Woodford came around, and this was an ultra premium bourbon, but it kind of like stayed where it's almost like kettle one when kettle one came on the scene. It just it, but it stayed at its price point. It's like it didn't it didn't continue to. Uh, then all the small batch stuff and the market expanded, the category expanded. But it's uh, uh, you make an old fashioned with this. You make a Manhattan. You make a you make a, a, a you know it's so versatile. If you're gonna make any kind of bourbon cocktail with this thing, it's mm-hmm. fantastic. No one's gonna be yeah, like, no one's Ooh. gonna complain. Puba, you're again reading my mind. So yep. my favorite cocktail, bourbon cocktail of all time, is a paper plane, which I know I've told you guys about a thousand times. And I promise you, when the weather's really nice and warm, you got to make it for we're us. We're gonna sit out on my Can't. deck, and I'm gonna get out a shaker Wait. and make this. It's incredible. I'll be stunned if any of you don't like it. <laughs> but the bourbon that I always use when I'm making it is Woodford. Wow. It's the best to mix with. It's the best. To, uh, you make an old-fashioned with bourbon. You make a, any of the a paper plane, whatever it is. Uh, a mint julep. Yep. Uh, you know, you're going you're, you're gonna to have a really good result. So it's super versatile. It doesn't have these overpowering notes that's going to take, take you into a divergent direction. So it's just it's right there in the middle. Not to change the subject, but back to the cigar. Everything that Puba and Senator are talking about, it's regarding affordability quality the taste the value you're getting everything in this particular cigar i, I'm, I am i'm shocked by just this to go cigar. back to it for two seconds you were totally right Senator. there's i'm getting a little sweetness now and the cocoa is ramping up and it's uh, what it's the, pairing perfectly what the hell's with this going bourbon. on here this, this bourbon is perfect with this yeah but even even from the point of view of the economics of it it's it's everything you're saying it works well with the cigar not just from the point of view of flavor but value absolutely very good Absolutely. Great value. Oh, yeah. So I found two interesting things about going back to the bourbon for a second that I think are interesting. Number one, uh, going back to a grinder point when he was going through some of the scotches that we talked about uh, recently, uh, Woodford is distilled primarily in pot stills, mm. which I guess is rare for bourbon. And, you know, more more commonly, I guess it's in a column still. They're vertical. Um, yeah. and, and that's cool. And this is the most shocking thing that I've learned about Woodford so far is that they were founded in 1996. What? Wow. This brand is only 25 years old. Wow. Shocking. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it came on the scene. I mean, Woodford, I just remember in the early 2000s when I discovered it, it was, like I said earlier, it was like kind of, you know, that, that was the, this was like the ultra premium bourbon that kind of, I think, made potentially opened up the category i'm not an expert in this at all but for me as a consumer 
it was like Woodford. I'm going to get a Woodford. I'm going to get a, you got to try Woodford Reserve. You get, it was around the office. Um, you know, people were drinking it in the office late at night uh, back when that was acceptable. <clears throat> 22 years ago <laughs> it's, it still is Last, some offices. Which, which is hold on which is hard to believe yesterday in poop's office <laughs> which is Bad hard man. to believe that this is true but it's true i mean it was uh you know this was kind of something that you people were gravitating towards it gives you it's 90 proof it's really delicious it gives you a good it gives Very you good. It, you know you want to you want to have a cocktail and just get a get get you know get it on real quick you know, you have a glass of this and go out. You're like, okay, give me a little pep in my step. I have nice. to say, I'm just so grateful for Woodford in the sense that as someone who travels a lot, and we obviously have some other lizards who do that as well for work, when you're on a flight, when you're on the Acela, on the train, I mean, for years, the bourbon option was Jack. Right. I'm not going to drink Jack on the rocks. It's not going to happen. Right. I don't enjoy that. You need a sploosh. You need a sploosh of something. Um. It wasn't until Woodford really became big. And then, and I say this especially because the scotch options on these planes or, or trains, it's usually, you know, doer's white label, which I also don't enjoy. So there was never really great options. And now Woodford, my airline, American Airlines, uh, Woodford is the, the official <laughs> bourbon of American Airlines. Go. It is also the official bourbon. Rooster, of go the- ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Rooster. It, it is, I'm not going to bother. It, it, it is. <laughs> It it's is, a moot point. <laughs> I mean, it is a moot point because they all suck. So we do agree on that. I will never say American is great or anything close to perfect. They're as fucked up as most of them. But uh, on the Acela, on the train also, the official bourbon is, is, uh, is Woodford. And I've appreciated that when I, I'm not going to sit there and enjoy, you know, a doer's white label on the train or a plane. The fact that I can get a Woodford and always be satisfied has been a, such a blessing. It, it's, it's ubiquitous in a way. Yeah. It's out there. And speaking of official, uh, Woodford is the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. Hell there yeah. There you go. Wow. So there you go. Wow. Hell yeah, it is. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Guys, this cigar. It's fucking shocking. I can't even believe it. What the hell's going I, on? I, I, I do have to say, though, and this may be I a controversial point. I think you should point. be shocked. It's, it's Padron. No, but I am shocked for a $7 the cigar. Price. I am. It, the one thing I will say that, that I, and this may be a controversial statement in the room, I do think that pairing this with this spirit is improving my enjoyment of the cigar in in its in in how it's kind of meshing and dancing in my mouth a little bit it I meshes mean, nicely I, I, but nah, i can me. have this by itself with a cup of coffee and be just as happy with the cigar I, honestly I think, I think the whiskey this the, with this high proof with this cigar doesn't really isn't the best pairing for me like i would not uh, it's a lighter cigar it, you know, no, I wouldn't okay. necessarily say that it's the greatest pairing. I'll say this. I, I'm with Gizmo on that. I, I would not call this at all a light cigar. And I think as you smoke this further along, it's going to pick up toward the end. Um, but what I would say is I think Padron generally, any Padron Maduro, this 2000 series, the 64, the 26, I think it just pairs well with anything that's robust in flavor. Yeah. And so, you know, a, a bourbon like this that's very flavorful, I think holds up well. You know, a Macallan 12, a very flavorful single ball. I think that holds up well. You know, a, a nice rich cup of coffee, like yeah. Bam mentioned, yeah. I think that holds up yeah. well with a Padron. Right. But I yeah. think it's all those things. You know, would I enjoy a, a Reposado tequila with this cigar? No, I'm going to need more flavor. I'm going to definitely need an Anejo yep. at a minimum. Yep. yep. Um, so, uh, you know, it just yeah. everything's good got point. a time and place. Yeah, for, for, yeah fair enough. It's a good, the, the, the smoke is good. It's burning quick, too. It, it really is. Burning is. Quick. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it open. It's The smoke output's fantastic. Yeah. Great and, combustion. And the, and the construction, as you can see, I've got an inch and a half ash on this. It's, yeah, look at Bam's cigar. Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. In fact, the other day when we were at the lounge and I was smoking that uh, Gizmo, remember, the, the ash was like that. Yeah. I was taking photos of it. You know, I I, incredible. I'll admit something. Like, you guys call it elitist. It's not. You know, what, if I see a guy smoking this cigar and he's, the, let's say, a first-timer, I'm going to have respect for that guy. This is a really good cigar to pick up. Absolutely. If you, if you haven't had many cigars in your life and this is something that you want to try and get into, it's great. So. And, if you're, and, and, and if you are looking from a budget standpoint, oh, and, yeah. and certainly I think the, the flavor of this kind of, you know, uh, not only complements the, the price, but kind of makes that irrelevant in its, you don't need to go to this cigar because of the price. The flavor is doing enough. But 
if you're going to look for a couple cigars during a day or a couple cigars during a round of golf, this is going to follow a more mild, medium cigar really, really well in those moments. Yeah. And, and kind of like we talk about going up in strength, I think somebody who doesn't have a ton of experience, you know, maybe you're playing around a golf, or you're having a lunch or something, this is going to dance really well with other cigars. It's a very high value cigar for the price. And it that's is. really the key here. Totally. Yeah. So, it, yeah, for the price, for $7 a smoke. <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, you're getting a lot. You're yeah. getting a hell oh, of yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, speaking of getting a lot, uh, Bam has been uh, getting a lot from us lizards. We, we've been uh, what? We've been a little. You know, I I I feel I, I feel, feel like uh, I'm being set up now. No, you're not being set up. <laughs> Is this yeah, an ambush? But, but at you know at, at our clubhouse, you know, you were getting some jokes. Uh, <laughs> the brunt of a lot. Oh, of jokes. Oh, I remember this. You remember? Fuck this. you! I share see, cigars. See? Oh, here we go. So oh. Bam Bam was upset at our lounge. Rooster, back me up. We were uh, we Bar were given. <laughs> <laughs> he he was the wrong guy what? to go to. We were giving Bam a lot of shit. I think Gizmo actually uh, gave him some shit, and Bam didn't appreciate it. So I wanted you to know, Bam. <laughs> yeah. I've been I was thinking of you, and uh, I felt bad about that. So I wanted to get you a little gift. <laughs> so I want you to uh, open that. Open this. I got to ruin what? my ash. What Pass that to Bam. What the hell is pull, happening pull here? Out what's sticking out from the top? Pull it out. What's happening in pre pro here? I don't know. Pull it out. Puba, back. Help me out here, Bam. I have no idea. Pull it out, Bam. You're no stranger to that. No, I'm not. <laughs> I love the delay. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't hear it. I didn't get it either. Is this like a poster of Jean-Claude Van Damme? For his, <laughs> the inside of his locker? I'll let you guys see it first. No, no, no. You have to see it first. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> look Wait at, a minute. Look at the hand note at the top. Hand note? Really? Yeah. That's her. Bro. He would... He's what pointing at Poopa, but Poopa would Cass, love this. Cast it around. Cast it around. Or show it to everyone. This okay. woman's a goddess. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? And what is this mini poster? Dude, I would have her in bed. <laughs> oh, Jesus. With a cigar. She would have one, too. <laughs> All right. Bab, show, Cease and show, desist. Show the poster. Just turn show, it around. Show everyone Can the poster. see the image? What's, what, wait, well, let's see what she's holding right now. <laughs> show the poster. I'm not sure what she's smoking. It, it's a cal- Whose cigar is it, that? The Cigar Vixen. The Cigar uh, Vixen it's calendar. It's the Cigar Vixen Delicia. So I messaged her, and uh, it is signed by her. Fuck There's me. There's a little heart for Bam at the top, her <laughs> signature. And uh, I thought Bam would appreciate it. Wow. Nice. You have a signed, personalized Dude, Cigar, cigar Vixen. Vixen calendar for 2022. Shoot. Wow. We can you? put it below your pillow. <laughs> I, or on the ceiling. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I am blown away. You know, I love her. Now, can you pass it around for please? all the yeah, listeners? Everyone's got to see it. Pass I, it around. I love my wife dearly. She's my goddess. But, honey. But. The Cigar Vixen, in man. Oh, boy. Wow. Hashtag Cigar Vixen. Dude, she is off the chain, this one. We got to be careful I've, when we have her on for an interview. I've that, seen uh, her on. Uh, this is a hell of a calendar. Can you figure out what she's what she's smoking there? Uh, I would assume it's P- Padilla Cigar Company. I, I'm not even looking because at that. it says Padilla. Padilla. I, I, <laughs> can we just Padilla. replay that Padilla. back? Padilla. 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 Okay. Listen, I do not... you have any tortillas, uh, Gizmo? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Listen, I uh, Senator, was this I'm your taken, doing? Yeah. I'm taken with this poster right I now. I literally ordered this for you. I'm not kidding. Bro, here you go. Here you go. Poopy. I love you. I love you, man. This is this is ridiculous. I'm framing that. I literally messaged her and asked her for a side copy just for you. Oh my God! Wow. Wow. And what does it say, Pooba? Read it. It says, "My bam." <laughs> bam, bam. It says <laughs> aloha. It does not. <laughs> Long, it says it says ashes. long ashes heart delicia. Long ashes heart delicia. Jeez Louise. <laughs> right? Right? Pooba, right? I mean, she's not my type, but I get it. Look at her look her up. She's um, got a great page on um, Instagram. Among other things. <laughs> <laughs> that is an incredible gift, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Show Rooster. Are, oh, we gonna, are we going to edit some of this? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bit. You have to do damage control before I make it, it in out. trouble. <laughs> Rooster has the glasses on his forehead. <laughs> He's doing a full examination of the calendar. 
Don't don't crease it. Hey, Rooster, what day of the week is July 4th? Can you zoom in on that for me and tell me? No permanent creases, Rooster, <laughs> on that poster. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Time has stopped for Rooster. Yeah, that's very, very cool. All right, Ben. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Buy it ben. now. Buy it now. Buy it now, baby. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's Anytime. fantastic. Fantastic. I'm I'm actually kind of impressed with how impressed he is. Dude. With the gift. I knew he would love this. I love that. Are you, are you kidding me? As soon as I saw she posted on her Instagram that she had made these calendars this year, I was like, if I could just get a signed version of this for Bab, this is going to make his It's year. almost as impressive as this ash on a $7 <laughs> cigar. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's ridiculous. you got almost a two-inch ash. It's two-inch now. Wow. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's pretty amazing. Great yeah, construction. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty approachable smoke. It I really mean, is. You know... I, like I said, I, I in in my in my past, I, I I smoked more of these. Um, Did you always smoke Maduro? And then yeah, and then graduated. Well, no, I smoked some naturals as well, and then just graduated up. But um, good cigar, I yeah, mean, for sure. So remember when we did the Papas Fritas? Yeah, yeah, I like that cigar if, too. If we didn't review it on the pod, but we had it right. Right. So if you had a choice, would you smoke that over this? It would depend what I'm looking for, because that, that cigar, I mean, Liga generally, for me, it, it has a very particular occasion. And that's when I need like an insane blast of flavor. That's honestly probably the most flavorful that's what it is. cigar it's, I've ever yeah. had. Yeah. Ever. It's like up there with like a 90th in flavor, where if I just want a lot of flavor but not to be punched in the face, then I'm definitely reaching for this over that. So it depends which I'm looking for. Did you find the? I didn't find. I don't find the Papa's Frida strong. Oh, it's it's I not. It's not, not strong. strong. It's not, not strong. strong. It's, it's just flavor. flavor. Yeah, so it's yeah. not strong it's, it's in like body. It's like a meal in a little yeah. cigar. It's yeah. not strong in body, but the fl- it's full it's flavor. It's a full yeah. flavored cigar. It's but delicious. I, it's delicious, but I didn't. The body's not strong. The, the, but yeah, the, I didn't find it to be which. It's really yeah, it we're makes not it quite strength a, flavor. Yeah. We're only talking about flavor. That's what makes it so enjoyable I mean, because I, I, I would yeah. reach for that cigar over this. Okay, that's just yeah. me. It's because uh, we know because yeah. I love a full flavored cigar. Totally, and and you right. you smoke you know fewer in quantity. Right. So like for me, if I've had six sticks and then I'm going to pick up that last smoke, <laughs> I'm probably going to pull this and not six? that. But if I've had two or three smokes, then like I'm definitely going to. The pick listener, it. If, if I've had eleven cigars, <laughs> the, <laughs> the lizards out there I'm, listening I'm, right I'm, now are like, you know, who the hell are these people? So. <laughs> And, and by oh the my. way, this is for the morning session. <laughs> <laughs> the oh evening session is completely cigar. different. <laughs> so Pagoda gave me my first Papa's Fritas last week at the club. Yeah. And I really, really loved it. I That's gave you cigar. that cigar. You did? Yeah. I was bullish on those <laughs> oh, years <Jesus>. ago. <laughs> Kudos to you. Okay. It was. It I was used to fantastic. buy a lot of those. I used to. They come in cabinets of 50. That's yeah. very cool. Um, and 25. But we'll review that at some point on the pod. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I think we, you know, what I think we do is I think we do another cold weather uh, smoke episode uh, coming into the winter, and I think we do the half Corona from H. Upman, and we do the uh, pop. Yeah, it's Street a little this. pigtail. It's yeah. a cool cigar. Yeah, it's a great little cigar. Oh, that's going to cool. be tough. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. It's got a foot band on it. It says Papa Fritas. Yep, I like that cigar. So here's my question on the Papa's Fritas. Talking, you know, since we're doing a little comparing, how much is that cigar? It's honestly, it's the same cheap. as this. Yeah, it's it's like six seven, or seven a, a stick. Cheaper, it's seven maybe. bucks. No, even less. Same. Is it the cab like two hundred and thirty? The, the cab, yes. But per stick, this is seven twenty, and that's also seven Not something bad. if yeah. you buy a single of it. Because I, I first bought it in singles. I bought two singles. It was seven it, change. Right, right. I think it's a more pre- maybe potentially a more premium cigar, but I don't know. I'm really enjoying the uh, the Woodford. I'm enjoying this 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 Padron two thousand. I mean, I'm so surprised. Yeah. I'm, there, for me, the sweetness is continuing. <laughs> we know what to get for your birthday. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's singing in the year 2000 <laughs> from Conan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good smoke. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. I mean, kudos to Padron that they can put out a $7 stick like this and it delivers in flavor. I mean, listen, there's plenty of New World smokes that we've done on this podcast from Nicaragua that... Oh, more pale. than double the price that the pale, pale in comparison. Pale, pale, pale in comparison. Pale. That Hoyo, the Hoyo the was horrible. Yeah. It's a piece of Shiite. Yeah, the Antonio, <laughs> horrible. Yeah, and, and I what, would argue the Pledge prequel. Yeah. The also, EP Carrillo. What else would be at? The My Father, right? The My Father as well, yeah. I mean, it's for seven yeah. bucks. This wipes the floor with all of them. It really does. Yep. 
you know, you're right. Crazy. You're, you're not wrong. Almost done with this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a short smoke. Yeah, yeah. it does. It went smoke fast, quick. right? It does. It's tasty. It's so open and it just blows up in the tasty. combustion. That's why, you know, it ironically can slot in in that, like, you know, last end of the night, you just want a quick 30 minute smoke. You, you could blow through one of these very fast. Yep. And the draw is just so wide. You just kiss it and it just, it just, it yeah. just. You're not fighting it at all. It burns half an edge. It burns few. <laughs> But that's not, you know, that's a vir- that's kind of a virtue in it too. It yeah, kind of just, it it, it 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 smokes. I mean, how many cigars you you know you light up and you're you're struggle struggling to get it to burn and to you know it's Constantly generating retouching a lot, it. retouching it. Yep. This thing is just stacking up and and just burning real well and. So, Senator, you, you know, you tried the 4,000. What do you think about that? I hated it. I'll just be yeah. honest. I mean, I, I, I won't lie. I, I, you know, I hated it, too. Um, you know, Pagoda was nice to give it to me because I said I had never had any of the Padron 1000 series, and it was a large ring gauge. And um, I, I don't ditch that many cigars, but I, I had to. I just, I don't know what it is. for. I, I think, you know, for this cigar that doesn't have much age on it at all, uh, when that's in a larger ring gauge... It, it doesn't do it any favors where I feel like the wrapper on this is, is, you know, we love the wrapper on most, uh, almost all the Padron cigars. I think that that's really where a lot of that f- good flavor that we like comes from. And I think you get more of that in this in a smaller ring gauge than that. And um, I think that's really the difference. And honestly, having that really discouraged me from wanting to try any of the thousand series. And I'm glad that a listener had reached out and said, try the 2000. And for me, this really delivers above a $7 price point. Yeah. And, you know, I'm around a lot of guys that are, haven't been smoking cigars for a long time. I will certainly steer them toward this particular cigar. No doubt. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's a good call out to listeners, too. I mean, if there's cigars out there that you're smoking, again, I, we have it on the tag at the end. But please tell us what you're smoking, what you're loving, because this is a great example of something that had it not come from a listener request, we would not be smoking the cigar right now. So, you know, please, please shoot us an email. And I think to Bam's point, you know, when I think of friends of mine who um, have recently gotten into cigars and they don't really know a lot and they're trying to figure it out, you know, they'll always say, especially because they're not yet in the vortex that we are, they want something very affordable. And they'll say, well, what can you recommend at like 10 bucks a cigar? That's a very hard question because really probably the cheapest thing I would recommend is going to be 13, 14 bucks, like a D4 or a... Uh, a 1964 exclusivo. So I feel like this is a really good gateway for someone into Padron oh, yeah. that at an incredibly accessible price point, totally. you would try one of these and say, okay, well, that was good. Now, you know, I want to try an exclusivo, the 64 line and yeah. keep working their way through. So right. right. And they'll sense. eventually elevate themselves. Yeah. And this, you know, this line from uh, Padron, just for the listener, I mean, <clears throat> we're smoking a, a 50 ring gauge by five inch. It, they have every single, almost every size you can imagine in this line from, you know, a, 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 what, a, a petite Corona all the way up to a Churchill. They do. Do they have Lonsdale as well? I think there might be a Lonsdale in this series. I don't think so. I'm not sure. but yeah, I, I mean, one thing to note with this is that because the draw is so open, um, everybody's pretty much done. Yeah, we're getting close. We're, we're, you know, where... Um, you could smoke a petite Corona that's more tightly rolled that's going to last you an hour. Um, so uh, this thing blows up with combustion. And mm. even, although it's a Robusto Extra, or is it a... It's a Robusto. I mean, it's 5 it, by 50 is it, five by, is it 5 by 50 It's 5 by 50 five, yeah. It's not over 5 Okay. So, I mean, for Robusto, it's, it's smoking pretty quick. Um, where, you know... You can smoke a petite Corona that's a little bit more tightly rolled that is actually going to take you maybe a little bit longer, you know. So um, the combustion on this just kind of just blows up. A lot of smoke output. A lot of, the oat draw is really open, which is, which is cool. I, I mean, it's giving you a lot of smoke. And outdoors, that can be really great. Exactly. Yeah. With, but like, like with Padron, you know, if you're on the golf course, if you're out um outdoors doing whatever 
you know, it's kind of a nice thing. You get some smoke to roll around in your mouth outside in, in maybe a windy situation. I can see this thing holding up. Um, and if you were going to smoke two-thirds of it, ditch it. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Who gives a shit? Throw, right. it, throw it in the ocean. You yeah. know? No, but still, you know, towards the end, I think uh, I'm getting a lot more cocoa flavor, and mm-hmm. it's, it's actually pretty tasty. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah absolutely. It certainly is. There's yeah. nothing acrid. There's nothing offensive on the finish mm. down the stretch here. So that just it speaks to the quality that Padron it says a lot. Yeah, they it don't does. put out they don't put out crap. The, the thing that impressed me, I feel like with a lot of cigars, especially at a more accessible price point, we always say, well, it started off well, but how's it going to finish? And right. it does not finish well. And what I like about this cigar, and it's incredible at this price point, I think the cigar gets better yeah. as you keep smoking it. it you know, it's yeah. unusual, but you're right does that's no no doubt no doubt about it it uh it it's it finishes it's, it's a strong finisher you know i'm just kind of scouring around the internet right now looking for pricing and i just found a couple places that have this box of 26 under 170 wow it's amazing wow. i mean that's an incredible price wow. and i just saw a note as well that these uh this tobacco is aged two and a half years wow oh, that's so, good. so there is some the 64 is aged four mm-hmm. uh the 26 is aged five, five. so got it you know, I mean, that's pretty great. One hundred seventy dollars for twenty six sticks is. I'm gonna get a box of this. It's I a am close too. cousin, and it just doesn't have like the the as the complexity and the, as full of flavor. But all those, all that to Rooster's point before, all that DNA is there. It's a cousin. Yeah, and uh, you can taste it. You can really taste it. It's it's a little junior exclusivo. Yeah, basically. One little note on this particular cigar, if I may, if I can mention this. I'm throwing a pretty big cigar, a fundraiser coming up. This is the cigar for the group that, nice. uh, that, that we selected. I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised and happy that we're going to serve this cigar to our guests. And I don't think... And it, I think everyone will be very satisfied. And I don't, yeah, and I don't think, it, yeah. for somebody who maybe doesn't smoke a lot of cigars, I think Senator or somebody touched on it, it I don't think this is going to be overwhelming. Oh, no. You know, in... in some other uh, cigars in the Padron you know line. In Nicaraguan tobacco, I'll give you a little example um, just from uh, uh, over the weekend. Um, I gave a friend of mine, Ramon Alona, especially selected, and he's not a big cigar smoker. Like the guy generally smokes like, and he's not a regular cigar smoker. Like he'll smoke a Java, he'll smoke... You know, I, I get, and he doesn't, he's not huge in it. And I gave him one and he goes, that was really, really great. Of course. That was really, really great. Um, and I'm like, well, welcome to Cuban tobacco because <laughs> that's Ramon Alone, especially selected is like, we've always said approachable. It's like, it's very, very medium bodied and complex, but doesn't overwhelm you with strength. The, the thing with Nicaraguan tobacco is that it does, and even this cigar does have a little bit of that sharpness mm-hmm. to it, even down the stretch, which we're used to, sure. and that we, we know to expect with Nic- with the Nicaraguan cigar. Um, this, I could see someone like that smoking the cigar and not being like, you know, not loving it. And, well, no, and not not loving it. Like oh, meaning like liking it. Yeah, okay. Because it's it doesn't deliver that it doesn't deliver the kind of as full of an experience as as a sixty four, which may take somebody who I, I I just I think Nicaraguan tobacco, honestly, for some can be it's strong. It it's has a, it has like a sharpness to it. I think very simply, Nicaraguan tobacco is for people who like very flavorful cigars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you want a lot flavor. of flavor, you pick yeah. up a Nicaraguan. Full flavor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Full like flavored and there, and and I just I think that this is a good introduction to that. Yeah, totally. Abs- absolutely. It's totally. a good introduction yeah. to that. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna start with this, you can graduate to the sixty four over time. Sure. And and I think this is a really good introduction to Padron. Um, I, I almost like a Ramon Alonis is a really good, and I think that's a really good introduction to Cuban cigars. Same Absolutely. with the D4, I would say the same thing. And the about. D4, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. But the D4 down the stretch can sometimes deliver a punch. A punch. Yep. Yeah, and I, I feel you're right on that. I think the RAS certainly doesn't deliver that as much of an oomph as the D4 towards the end. 
And there's a nuttiness and a sweetness about the Rast that I think is very, very approachable. It really is. I mean, I, the, blown away to the point where he was like, I can't believe I really, how much I like this. Yeah. Um, so this is, is, is a good example, I think, of something that maybe someone who's been put off by Nicaraguan tobacco or can't, it, it, it's a good introductor, an introductory cigar to kind of pave the way to graduate up to something a little bit bolder. Yeah, and now that I've had this, I would highly recommend this. Absolutely. I, I will be pushing this, yeah. So back to the Woodford for a second, boys. Are you yeah. guys ready to do the uh, formal liquor rating on this thing? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Bam, you're up. I'm a little perplexed with this one because it, it's so approachable and the price point is right where it is, right? It's so so affordable, but the flavor and the sweetness and there's a little bite to it, which I happen to like. Uh, you know, I... I'm going to give it an eight. Okay. Pagoda. Eight. Okay. When I factor everything in, including the price point, mm -hmm. I've been going back and forth between an eight and yeah. nine, and I have to give it a nine because Oof. at the price wow. point, yeah. what it yeah, delivers, yeah, yeah. It's I fair. have to do it. It's a fair, it's a fair score. It. I'm at an eight myself. Yeah, I'm at a nine. I'm aligned with Senator. Nice. Same point of view. Nice. All right. The composite lizard score on the Woodford Reserve great. is an 8.4. That's a great score. Great score. I think that's a very fair score for this. Definite recommend. <laughs> Absolutely. Great, great bourbon, especially at the price. You know, and, and we talked about, you know, having guests over, having people over. Throw a Padron 2000 Maduro uh, and uh, a Woodford Reserve all way, day. You, you know, it's crazy. Woodford Reserve like my wife, and she mixes it with like a Diet Coke. Yeah. Yeah. She loves it. Yeah. She yeah. loves it. You know, she's just like, it's, 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 you can, you it's can versatile. It, you can that's the thing it's, it's versatile. versatile yeah you know at very same comments i would give for this cigar we're smoking yeah yeah speaking of the cigar we are coming very quickly into the last third here boys. yes sir towards the end are you guys ready to give the uh formal lizard rating on the padron 2000 everybody ready let's do it you're up rooster so for me it's a seven seven okay yeah it's a seven for me too okay i'm gonna give it an eight I'm with Gizmo. When you factor in everything, especially as the price point, I'm at an eight. Pagoda? I'm at a seven. And the reason is, I don't think I would just go and, uh, you know, buy a lot of these. I, you know, I'm an exclusive fan, which is a 10 for me. Um, so I'm more likely to go towards the exclusive. -o. Um, that's a seven for me. But definitely something I'll have for guests and, you know, people who want to try out a Maduro cigar for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm at an eight, okay. and I'll go into the reasons as well after we come up with our composite score. Composite lizard score, boys, is a seven point five. Yeah, yeah, modest that's recommend. Fair. Yeah, it's fair for this. I think that's fair. It's a seven. It's a seven because, uh, you know, I can't put it up there with like a, a Mag Forty Six or yeah, or, that's or, true. You know, you know what? That's some true. of these other ratings that we've given eight, given cigars eights. I mean, I'm, I, I think I gave the Cohiba. Single two and an eight. I mean, I'm not gonna. I can't. I can't. It's, I'm not putting it in no, that I, class. No, I think all that's fair. I. I the just, only thing I would say I hope people consider as they're scoring, um, is you know, this for me when I say is an eight. Like this, I'm not comparing this. This isn't in the class of, you know, nicer, more expensive cigars. Like right. Like if I were to rate. Based on that, I mean, I would give, I mean, probably every cigar like a much lower <laughs> score. The same way that some cigars that are really expensive that I downrate because it's a very good cigar, but it's it's not at that price point. It's not that special. Yeah. So that that's where I'm coming from, just introducing some of that. So like for me in its class, like I would rate it an eight, which is like a seven to maybe $12 stick. Um, but yeah, I agree with you, Poop. I mean, no, no arguments there uh, i mean a, a cigar that um is in a different class a 20 something 30 dollar a 25 dollar stick like a seaglow 2 or you know some of these others i would never compare in any sense yeah the both and the argument that both puba and senator are making it, it's very valid sure the 7.5 score could be a little it's i'm not going to say it's misleading because it's i really enjoyed this cigar but from the point of view of if it's potential ubiquitous nature that i can give it to almost anyone 
there's a lot of value there. Uh, well, that's why I gave it an eight was the value proposition. Uh, that's you what, know, exactly right. I think about other cigars in that price range. Mm. I doubt if we smoked m- most of the other New World cigars in that price range yeah. that, that we're going to come in Yeah, and that's close the thing. That. And if, if a listener is listening to this and wants to try this and have a party and have a few guys over, this is a great cigar to hand out. Yeah, I don't think anybody no would be very unhappy. Yeah, with and this. I like where this netted out because, you know, ironically, if I had to put this not just in its class but against everything, like, yeah, 7.5 I think is a fair score. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I think it's a very good value smoke, and, and uh, I'm I'm certainly personally very surprised by this, and I'm glad we did it tonight because, you know, as a Padron fanboy, I think we're a Padron, you know, as a podcast, we're Padron fanboys. I, I think this really stacks up uh, for what it is uh, as a really value, high-quality cigar. They put out a good product. It's a quality product. It's a quality. The, the, the draw is great. The combustion is great. Um, uh and the, the the taste is is really really good. Is it exemplary? No, but is it serviceable? Hell yes. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, you 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 look at some of these other cigars that have been rated high in cigar aficionado or come at a fifteen, twenty, twenty five dollar price point. I mean, a lot of those pale in comparison to this. So. I think the best example was the one give, uh, Giz gave earlier when you said the Pledge prequel. Yeah, number that one was cigar of the cigar year. Cigar of the year. That's like a $16, $18 stick. Any day of the week, I would smoke this $7 Padron over the Pledge prequel. Totally agree. One At more than double the price. 100% agree. Yeah, that, 100% agree. Yeah, that Pledge prequel's not. Yeah, no, it was not horrible. at all. Not terrific. Yeah, it was and not good. It's a lesson for the listener for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. don't let price fool you because no. I'll admit that, right, the only reason I never smoked the 1000 series is because I said, how good can a $7 cigar be? I, I just didn't believe it was possible to make something at that price point that had enough flavor I would enjoy. And for well, 7 that, bucks, they've done it. That prequel is really a $8 cigar with a, with an $8 band on it. Yeah, well, don't forget, <laughs> the, the, band don't forget the foot band. The band is more impressive. Oh, than don't the forget cigar. the scotch don't, tape. <laughs> don't forget the scotch tape. That's, that adds a little price to it. All right, boys, the Padron 2000 Maduro. Very nice. Uh, Pagoda, thank you for the Woodford Reserve. Fantastic bourbon, Thanks. a classic bourbon. Thank and you. I think this was a good lesson for me personally oh, yeah. in value and, and in enjoyment. I mean, we've been, we, ha- we got about 50, 55 minutes out of this cigar tonight. A great hour for me yeah. for, for the value. Totally and, agree. Uh, I, like, I would enjoy this with anyone. No doubt. So I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a good lesson for me and, and for us and for the listeners. So... Go out, grab a couple of these sticks and enjoy them. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Keep smoking. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us, loungelizardspod, P-O-D. That's loungelizardspod at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram, at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week.